So I did manage to get an MSI board for the NDA launch and they've sent me the Meg Z390 Ace. So I'm quite looking forward to seeing this and it's also, if you think about it, the first time that we've seen Meg used since the massive TR4 amazing board that they did. So considering I liked that board so much, my hopes are very high. So, first look at the box. Na -na. Yeah, boring, yeah, I know. So you can have a look all the way around the back. Don't forget, you can zoom in, you can pause, and all of that sort of stuff. This, uh, I have to go careful with the amount I'm allowed to say today. Uh, inside the box, driver CD, stickers, you do get your Wi-Fi uh, stand, it's not magnetic. Then you get, it would appear, yeah, they are just four SATA cables. And then the other cables that you get are just RGB extensions. So we can save time. We've done that bit really fast. Okay, so we can have a good look at the board in its entirety before I show you around and do all the closely up bits. I do like the fact that they've got the uh, tape on the edge of the, because there's protective tape underneath that. But I just do like the fact that they've bothered to put something on it. So, oh, look, you can see some ugly boy in the mirror. Anyway, top left-hand corner, we will start there. Okay, so you get two 8-pin EPSs at the top. We don't know if the CPU is going to need this yet, but it may help if you're doing, like, mega overclocking or anything like that. Across, you can see you've got CPU fan and then a pump header as well. Obviously, you can use that for a secondary fan if you want as well. Then you can also see that you've got a Corsair uh, RGB out headery thing we do for what's it so that will go into the um, commanders and stuff it's good that there's um, a header for that you see that you've got a normal RGB header as well uh, then you've got your PCI um, error code reader thing come down a little bit further and you can see that you've got some voltage uh, checking points as well as just down here there'll be your little LEDs that will give you a heads up on what stage through the uh, post process that you're going through you can see you've got an, another uh, PWM fan there is fan header there as well we come a little bit further down there's two external USB uh, 3.1 headers there's the first of two USB uh, 3 um, headers that obviously that's the external ones uh, but that one's on a right angle right near the uh, SATA headers just trying to balance the board up so that we can have a better look but anyway so you do get the uh, power and reset switch down at the bottom. This is your overclock dial. I'm still not a fan of these and I never have been um, because it's all preset stuff and I'm, uh, normally the voltages are too high for pretty much 99% of the board's uh, CPUs out there because it doesn't actually tailor it to your CPU. So I'm not saying anything that I haven't said before. But you do get a couple of USB 2s over on this side. Um, you can see that you do get the extra USB 3 there. You've got another pump header here and here. You can see that this M.2 has a cover on it as well. Uh, most of the other boards I've seen from other manufacturers have only got two M.2s, but this has three. You can also see that all three of the PCR Expresses are shielded as well. Now, this one and this one go into the CPU, but this one, this one, and the bottom one are actually wired up to the chipset. Zoomed in up close look at the power delivery around the CPU socket. Now, one thing I would say is the heat sinks do look very, very beefy. There's a lot of material there, but there's not a great deal of surface area because they're actually, despite being big chunks of metal, they're, um, uh, they're not particularly like intricate designs or anything. It is just hunks of material. So this is something I'm probably going to have to keep an eye on and have a good look at the VRM temps to see how well that side of it performs. Okay, so the IO shield comes pre-fitted. Uh, then you have a BIOS flashback button and clear CMOS. It feels like I'm making an ACES video. Um, then uh, you can see a BIOS flashbacks uh, USB port here. Then you've got some more USB 2s here. You can see that we've got USB uh, 3 Gen 2 here and then normal USB 3 here. Ethernet, um, Ethernet, what are you on about, Tom? That's your wireless there. And then the audio connections, if we have a look down the bottom, 
audio connections. So there's your USBs that I was saying about before. Uh, the audio connectors are gold plated as well. Now, I'm not allowed to put a ninth gen CPU in this to power it up. There is lighting and I've got a way we can do it. Okay, so these lights are just in demo mode because I've got a magic cable that allows me to power them up. Uh, but it's like an infinity mirror sort of thing going on where you've got the, a strip of um, RGBs along the back and then it's all reflected inside. And it's actually a bit nuts. So if you turn it that way, you'll see what I mean. It kind of like disappears. But the more you kind of get round to look at it, now it's quite pretty. Obviously you're going to be able to set it up in the um, uh, the software so that you can set it to do what you want. But that's literally above that IO, that's literally all there is. There's no other lights anywhere. There's no lights around the back. Well, like I said, there's no lights anywhere else. But that's our preview of the Meg Ace. So because of the old Meg, my um, the bar for this, for me personally, has been set very high. So I'm, I'm hoping for great things for, from this, but you're gonna have to come back after the CPU launch to find out whether it performs as well as I and maybe you are hoping.